And it must be something else then. You know what I mean. What's that? Where'd you get that from? I bought it from woodwork classes just in case it came in handy. Don't be stupid. Put it away. We shouldn't have come. We should have gone when I said so. Perhaps it's haunted. Perhaps there's a ghost. Shh. Listen. It's a ghost. I know it is. Let's both try the door. No. Look, Tucker, we've got to get out of here sometime. Well, if we wait a bit, it might go away. I thought you were tougher than I was. All right, I will if you will. funny smell was. How do you know? I got one at home. What about the horrible noise? That was a cat too. As does the same sometimes. Now he tells us. I was really scared. I thought it was a real ghost. Look, no ghost could scare me. I was ready for anything. <laughs> oh, come off it. I was just waiting to see how long it would be before you two realised, that's all. Yeah. Look, I knew all along it was a cat. I could tell by the noise. Look, that must have been the bang we heard. Cat must have knocked them over. I think we should go now. Why? There's nothing here, is there? Well, we haven't looked upstairs yet, have we? If we don't go now, we'll be late. We've got plenty of time. Hurry up, Tucker. Hang on, look at this. What is it? Get on, Billy. I just want that thing new. one of his flipping spooks again. Forward, slave! You two better come back down here. Bloody kids. How long do you reckon we've been here? I don't know. I wish I knew what was going on in there. Probably deciding what to do with us. 
I ain't sitting around here. Everyone knows you're for it. Anyway, why does they go and bring our mums along? Dunno. Could expel us. Flipping neck, I hope not. My dad had flip your neck. Do his nut, would he? Yeah, mine. Yeah, so would mine. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Gregson. You've been most understanding. So long as it doesn't happen again. You two don't know how lucky you've been. I'll deal with you two in a moment. Well, at least that is one hurdle over. Now, I think we had really better decide... Yes? Justin Bennett's father's on the phone from the hospital, Mr. Starling. Oh, ah, uh, yes. Well, I'll take that call in your office, if you'd excuse me. And it definitely was Peter carrying this, was it, Mr. Mitchell? I'm afraid so, Mr. Jenkins. Oh, I'm sure you're right, Mr. Mitchell. <laughs> Fancies himself as a right little hard case, as Peter. His father's told him he'd end up in trouble if he wasn't careful. I'm only sorry he's involved Mrs. Green's boy. Don't fret over Benjamin, Mrs. Jenkins. He won't be led where his nose don't want to go. If he's involved in this business, it's because he wanted to be involved. Well, hopefully they didn't mean any harm. Well, that was short and sweet, I don't think. Many news of Justin. Not good. Broken leg and severe concussion. And Mr. Bennett is thinking of taking Justin away from the school. Well, why should he do that? He thinks it's a bad influence in Justin. Somehow I can't help but feel a sense of failure on our part myself. Oh, rubbish. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Starling, but I don't agree with you. I can't speak for Mrs. Green here, but as far as I'm concerned, the fault lies not with the school, but with Peter. Perhaps with his father and me. I don't know. But I do know he's old enough to know the difference between right and wrong. I agree with Mrs. Jenkins. Benjamin knows how to behave himself and what to expect if he doesn't. I take it then you both wish me to initiate the disciplinary action we discussed earlier. It's for their own good. Very well. If you're both sure. Well, I think that in the circumstances it is the right decision, Mr. Mitchell. Get them in. Jenkins, Green, come in. Stand over there. Now, there's no point in going over it all again. Have you anything to say for yourselves? Well, that simply leaves the question of punishment. Now, various suggestions have been made. For example, you, Green, you could be permanently suspended from the school football team. And you, Jenkins, you could be barred from the school trip abroad. Finally, however, the punishment was decided with, and indeed upon the request of your parents. So for the first time in the school's history as a comprehensive, I am going to administer corporal punishment. And I can only hope that it teaches you a lesson which you will never, ever forget. You do well to look like that now, my lad. Just wait till your father hears about this. And that applies to you as well, Benjamin. Especially when your father learns what you've been up to in that new blazer. Right, you two wait outside. Till I finish talking to your mothers. Well, go on. Flippy Nick, it's just like me mum, eh? It never sticks out for you. Well, I suppose we deserved it, didn't we? How many do you reckon we'll get? Dunno. Six of the best, I reckon. It might be. Shut even. up, Tucker. Did you ever get the cane at your last school? No, we didn't have one. Neither did we. I reckon I can take it, though. Go on your ends. It don't hurt as much, then. How do you know? Our kid told me. He was always getting the cane. He got six of the best across the bum once. How many can you take? I don't know. As many as you, I suppose. Bet you can't. Look, just shut up, Tucker. That's how you got to see in the first place. I'm sorry. It's only because I'm scared as well. Well, you two, you haven't made a very successful start at Grange Hill, have you? Still, everybody's agreed to wipe the slate clean, provided you've learnt your lesson. Have you? Right then, you better get in there and take your punishment. Go on then. 